Hi, we're back with Ronnie Stoferle of Incrementum AG with the In Gold We Trust Report. And this section is on silver. Ronnie, how are you doing? Very good, Mike. How are you? Great. So, very first chart in your section titled uh, Silver's Silver Lining. Uh, we have the chart of the gold-silver ratio of the modern era. And this has done some pretty amazing things this year that uh, I really wasn't expecting uh, for it to do. So uh, this goes back to 1960. I've seen uh, some of these charts that go back a few hundred years mm -hmm. uh, or even more than a thousand years. But tell us what you see in this chart. Well, well actually, this year, as you, as, as you know, we, we, we write the In Gold We Trust report for 14 years now. And this was the very first year when we had a special chapter dedicated to silver. And, and we write uh, in the summary of the report, we will be surprised if the decade or two ahead are not some of the best years in silver's long history. And what, what we saw in spring was this ratio or let's let's say this exchange rate between gold and silver going up to almost 125 on a daily basis it was 125 and um we 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 have some really long-term charts in the report also 600 years gold silver ratio and based on those numbers we have never seen a gold silver ratio that high so with one ounce of gold uh, you could buy 125 ounces of silver. Now, this, this ratio was just crazy. And it, it was probably also because, you know, in spring we saw this massive stress in the financial market and we saw some sort of a deflationary collapse in financial markets. And normally in those phases, um, silver just sells off big time and, and, and gold outperforms uh, 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 silver. So this spike in the gold-silver ratio was, was really, that was, that was history. Now we said, well, this is a fantastic opportunity. This, this, this ratio is so, so much out of sync. Of course, it can go perhaps slightly higher, but on a historic basis, this is just a bargain. So, now at the moment, uh, you know, silver outperformed gold big time over the last couple of, of months. Now this ratio is now trading at 80. So you can buy with one ounce of gold, you can buy 80 ounces of silver. And, and we crunched the numbers and, and this shows you the ratio since 1960. And then we calculated the top 10% for the ratio, the bottom 10% and the median. So at 80, actually silver is still uh, extremely cheap versus gold. 58 would be the medium and normally such big trends, secular trends end in extremes. So I wouldn't wonder if we go to a gold-silver ratio of 30 or even lower within the cause of this gold bull market because in every yeah. big gold bull market, silver outperformed gold. Yeah, I'm uh, expecting silver to way outperform gold. Uh, I'm, I plan on... Uh, converting. There are times when, when the gold-silver ratio is above 70-75, I usually buy only silver. And when it's between uh, 50 and 70 or 75, I buy a mixture. And if it's below 50, uh, I only buy gold. Uh, I don't sell, so I don't really mm -hmm. trade the gold-silver ratio. I use it as an indicator to tell me which one is the most undervalued and to buy. But then when it comes to my exit strategy, I plan on selling in tranches uh, and using this gold-silver ratio. I plan on converting uh, from silver to gold at you know, 30, uh, potentially 20. I think there's a, a good potential that it could go to 10. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, if you could take this back further, uh, it, it hit 100 uh, back in 19, 1992, it looks like. But it also hit 100 back in the 30s. Uh, and uh, so that was the previous peak. 125 was crazy. And when you look at this over like thousands of years, what you mm. see is the, the average ratio over thousands of years was uh, somewhere, you know, depending on where you were on the planet, it would vary. But it was usually determined by the market uh, uh, doing price discovery 
on the gold and silver coins that were in circulation. How many were there in circulation? And uh, globally, uh, the, the uh, supplies of, of uh, silver uh, used to be, of, of mineable supplies, used to be uh, 12 to 15 uh, times more silver that was mineable than gold. But um, I've been talking with uh, a number of people in the mining industry lately, and they say that that's dropped to about eight, mm -hmm. is what I'm hearing. So they're only uh, digging up eight times more uh, silver than gold, uh, yet uh, the ratio was at 125. How is this possible? <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, so silver is tremendously undervalued, and uh, that's the one that I uh, buy based on this. Um, so this, this is a fascinating chart. Um, uh, I think uh, um, even for me, uh, you know, I, I like to go back a little bit further than this, uh, gather a little bit more data. So that center line of 58 would come. And what did we hit in, um, this looks like monthly data I'm seeing here. Am I mm -hmm, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, because in 1980, I know that it hit a ratio of 14. Uh, and, uh, and it, the, in 1992, it looks like, or 91, uh, that's where it hit 100. And so at a, on a monthly, it's not quite showing that if it was a daily, mm -hmm. you'd see 114. Um, and, uh, uh, I just think that, uh, you know, we have not seen the rush into gold and silver yet. That hasn't happened. And when gold gets past $5,000 an ounce, there's going to be some time or another when people look at it and they go, wow, it was just 250 in, in the year 2000. I think it's overpriced. How much is that silver stuff? Mm, you know? mm. and, and they're going to start buying silver. And that was the dynamic that changed in 1979. And people changed their preference from silver to gold and, and silver vastly outperformed gold. So let's move on to the next chart and uh, tell me about uh, silver inflation adjusted, and this is uh, on a logarithmic chart. So, yeah, well, well, we 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 always said that because it's interesting, Mike. If if I talk to people that don't really understand gold, they say, yeah, it's interesting, but it's it's already too expensive. So I will start buying at sixteen hundred, and I say, yeah, <laughs> it's your decision, um, but I don't think that we will see sixteen hundred. Um, and if we would go there, I think they're, I'm damn sure that they, that they won't buy them because then they would say, no, it's, it's in a bear market. But anyways, I think, um, <laughs> I think on, an right. in, on an inflation adjusted basis, the price of gold has to exceed the 2,300 US dollars. And uh, because normally that's, that's what, 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 what a bull market does. It goes above the inflation adjusted all time high. Now, we know that um, those government statistics for CPI and PCE, um, the way that inflation is measured is, let's say we, we could question it. Um, right. It is highly subjective and, and it doesn't really has to do anything with, with real life. So I, I, I call it the CP lie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so what you can see here is that on an inflation adjusted basis silver is even cheaper now we saw this this big bull market in 1980s and uh and i think it's it, it's pretty interesting one thing that i wanted to add i think in gold this rush from from institutional investors is just getting started so we saw, for example, that uh, the Ohio Pension Fund said that they will invest 5% of their assets in gold. We saw that Warren Buffett was buying a stake in Barrick Gold. We saw that Goldman Sachs is buying the Perth Mint ETF. So those are all signs that, well, it's getting more accepted in the institutional world. Now, for silver, nobody cares about silver yet. And as it's such a tiny market, you only really need a couple of billions to really move this market and there will probably be no material left. Now, I think of one thing that we also describe in the report, a gentleman called Warren Buffett, 
um, many people forget that he was one of the biggest silver investors back in the days. And, 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 and we think um, it is also um, likely that a new source of demand will at some point kick in. And this is central bank demand. People tend to forget that back in the days, um, central banks didn't only hold gold, they also held enormous amounts of silver. So I think from a supply-demand picture, um, to understand silver, it's, 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 it's a bit more difficult um, than, than with the gold market because all those different supply sources for, for silver they're extremely interesting and we're explaining them uh, in, 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 in this year's In Gold We Trust report. But I think from a from purely supply demand picture, silver looks extremely interesting. Silver is, of course, a high beta play on gold. And, and therefore, I think, you know, the, the stars are aligned for, for, for a nice bull market in silver. But, you know, you have to live with this volatility it's it's a really wild ride i i, I once compared it do you want to drive a lamborghini or do you want to drive you know a, a safe volvo i mean not everybody wants to drive a lamborghini and perhaps at some point you're just too old to drive a lamborghini um but you have to you you have to know that the volatility in silver but also in the mining market especially in junior mining is completely different compared to the gold market. Yeah, uh, you know, the central bank demand is something that I had not really thought of, but they sold off all of their, no yeah. central bank has any silver anymore, and they used to. So if we went back to any type of standard uh, where, you know, uh, I believe that uh, we're coming near the end of the global dollar standard, this current monetary system that we're on, and that we've got to go from, uh, a uh, system that is based on something that always fails, fiat currencies, back to something that never fails. And all of the other ships in the world monetary system were just baby steps mm. off of gold. Now it's no gold backing. And when this starts to fail, all of the economists and finance ministers are going to look around and say, well, what worked before? Mm. And so I do think that uh, there's a, uh, a high potential that uh, gold could have something to do with the global monetary system in the future. But I wanted to point out, you also mentioned Warren Buffett. And right in the middle of this, in, in uh, I think 1998 or 99 here, there's something called the Buffett blip. Mm -hmm. And just for our viewers that aren't up on their hi history of silver, Warren Buffett accumulated 129.6 or 0.7 uh, million ounces of silver and then you know, using futures contracts, and then stood for delivery and mm -hmm. said, I want my silver. And he single-handedly, one person, almost doubled the price of silver. Mm -hmm. And then he held on to it later, and then suddenly Berkshire Hathaway reported that they no longer had their silver, and somehow SLV, had, a, had their, <laughs> one of their mandates was they had to accumulate 130 million ounces of silver <laughs> before they could start trading. And, uh, and Warren Buffett reported that he didn't have, he no longer had 129.7 million ounces. So it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating story. Silver has just a fascinating background to it. So let's move on to the next chart. And this shows a tremendous undervaluation right now. And this only uh, goes through uh, basically this century. But uh, uh, silver is just very undervalued. Tell us about the silver S&P 500 ratio on page 35. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's similar to the gold S&P ratio, but, but the gold S&P ratio is already, you know, a, a couple of stages higher. This is just getting started. Uh, and this is also a very nice confirmation because we always said gold moves first then it's silver following, then it's the energy market and commodities. And if you have a look at, for example, well, oil prices, you know, everybody is extremely pessimistic. You know, we're uh, still basically in, 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 in the biggest crisis, economic crisis since the Great Depression. Oil prices are at, at, at 40 bucks a barrel. 
Shouldn't they be significantly lower? Um, have a look at copper prices. Have a look at agricultural commodities. They're all doing really, really well. And this is a sign for me that the market is seeing inflation on the horizon, that this cracker boom is really happening. Now, if you have a look at this chart, you can see, well, if you want to become bullish on silver, probably now is a good starting point. This ratio has stabilized over the last couple of quarters and now is about to break out. But this is still, still pretty early in the whole game, but I think it's, it's, it's really happening. And as you can see here, from basically 2000 until 2011, we saw this big trend of outperformance of silver versus the S&P. And then at the end of the trend, like in every big trend, it was going parabolic. Now this trend where we are is just a very stable and slow trend, but it will pick up momentum. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely agree with you on this one too. Uh, it's an amazing chart and it just shows you how much of a bargain silver is right now. So I want to thank you so much. I know that you have to run. Uh, uh, it was great having you here. Uh, so uh, I want to get together again sometime soon and uh, talk about the mining stocks potentially. So if you're open to that, we'll do this again sometime. Anytime, Mike. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. And we'll see you later. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.